Hey there, it's good to see you. Are you ready for a fantastic 4th of July weekend? I know I certainly am getting ready to head out of town. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out the next stop for the traveling makeup box swap. This box has gotten crazy. I mean, there's tons of cool stuff in here. It was started originally by Ashley. You know her as Texas Mommy of Boys here on YouTube. Because there is so much stuff, I'm going to link everybody who has participated thus far in the description box below along with their videos so that you can see how the box has changed. And as far as where I will be sending it, it will be going to Cherish or Pretty Pistol 86 after I get it sent off in the mail. In fact, I need to go to the post office and see about getting a bigger box because there's no room, <laughs> there's no room. And then um, it will make its last stop with Ashley. And it's it's brilliant because, you know, after she selects her items, she found a women's shelter in her area that will accept lightly swatched makeup, very gently used makeup and new makeup to pass on to women who will love it and enjoy it. So, I mean, how cool to continue sharing the love um, with somebody who will instantly, you know, embrace these products and, and give us a chance to kind of swap out some things and shake up our routines as well. So, um, I'm very quickly, I'm going to go through what I chose out of the box because I didn't actually pick a lot. There were tons of neat things, lots of eyeshadow palettes, blushes, lip products and whatnot. But since I've been so hardcore focused in on project panning. I really wanted to only pick things that I know I can instantly incorporate and not feel like I'm I'm gonna have them sitting in my collection. So I, I really didn't choose a whole lot, but every time I like look in my collection, I'm finding more stuff to put in the box. So I'm gonna see what I can fit, <laughs> what I'm gonna show you, what I'm going to um, pass along. But as far as what I chose, it's not very much. So. Just to kind of get into what I chose, the first thing that immediately grabbed my attention, Adriana put this into the box. It's just a travel mirror from Mary Kay. I've been wanting a good travel mirror to just keep in my duffel bag that I constantly take out of town with me um, because I don't like using the tiny little compacts and because I wear glasses, using a bathroom mirror is really difficult for me to do because I can't see and I don't want to take my, tra my uh, full-size mirror that I use on my vanity at home. So when Adriana put this into the box, I was like, that's perfect. That's exactly what I need right now. And it has this little compact, I mean, cosmetic bag. Can I speak today? Um, but the mirror basically flips up and makes a stand and then I can use it on a tabletop or hand hold it and it's a decent size. So perfect. It will immediately be used and constantly stay in my travel bag ready to go on the go with me so and then you know the only couple other things i picked up let's kind of go through the first thing that i wanted to uh, revisit i used this several years ago so when i saw it in the traveling makeup box swap i decided to pick it up again it is the laura mercier foundation primer in broad spectrum spf i don't think there is a color to this but i remember liking it years ago I can always go through foundation primer. It's something that I know isn't gonna sit for very long in my collection. So I decided to go on and pick this up. Then another thing I wanted to pick up, the Clinique foundation that I'm painting for my Project 10 pan is a fabulous foundation. But I'm getting to the point where it's so matte, it feels a little bit heavy. So when I saw that this was going to be included in the box, it is the Tarte Pure Maracuja Oil. I was so excited because I figured this might be a way for me to make the Clinique foundation work a little bit better so that I can finish off what's left in the bottle. There is a roll, a rollerball applicator to this oil. So what I figured I would do is kind of roll a little bit of this onto my hand and then put some of the foundation before applying it to my face with a moistened beauty blender. Um, and then, you know, maybe even use this at night, you know, cause I go in and I use coconut oil to remove my makeup. I go into the shower, wash my face, and then I come out. This might be a nice little refresher on the skin after a hot shower with these high summer temperatures. So really, really excited to try that. And then the next thing I chose, I saw a luminous foundation. Um, Adriana put these in here. I believe it is from Mary Kay. It is the Time Wise Luminous Wear Liquid Foundation in the shade Ivory 4. It looks like it's gonna be a pretty good color match. 
but I figured this would be a nice change up from wearing matte foundations. Cause I mean, I wore the Clinique foundation. I've worn it for months and months, but I mean, I've been in such a matte foundation routine. I think it'd be kind of nice to try something a little bit more luminous and glowy um, for the rest of the summer before going back into matte foundations as we get into the fall. So I've never tried a Mary Kay foundation. I'm interested to see if this is going to work well with my skin. I'm hoping it doesn't break me out and I'm hoping that it's not going to be too glowy. So we'll see. But then just in case if it's too glowy, I saw either Jen or Rochelle put this in here. This is the Your Minerals from Sweden. The transparent veil is just a loose translucent setting powder. I chose this because I always go through setting powders. I don't mind loose setting powders. So I figured this would be an excellent way to keep going through my routine. It'll tone down if this is way too luminous and then I know I can use this on top of any other foundation um, that I pan. So, and then the last thing, the very last thing, I was excited when I saw Bethany put this in. It is a Starlux eyeliner pencil in the shade Amethyst. When I saw this, I immediately thought of what I'm going to do when I pan the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette because that shade Candied Violet in there, it's gray looking on the eyes. So I thought that this eyeliner might be a fun way to pop some lighter purple into my inner corner or use this on my lash line and then set it with Candied Violet from the Chocolate Bar palette. I don't know, but I just thought fun way easy try out a star looks eyeliner and it's something that again i know that i can use very quickly so okay now as far as what i would like to put in the box i'm going to try to fit as much of this as i can but there's already so many beautiful things in the box i don't know if i'm going to be able to fit everything in there but i'm going to try so the first things that i would love to pass along um, because i know that these can be instantly enjoyed and loved are three Z palettes from my collection. It's the large Z palette from Sephora, a purple themed one, and then also a small, you know, nine pan Z palette. Um, I'm really going through a phase right now where I'm done depotting things, but also I want to get rid of the incentive to acquire more makeup. And I know that having the extra storage like this is the way to do it. I did go on and clear out the last of the old, old, old eyeshadows that I needed to get rid of. And so now that I have these empty containers, I want to pass them along to somebody who can instantly love them and incorporate them. Because as I pan more eyeshadow out of my collection, I still have several Z palettes if I wanted to buy single shadows in the future or Depop blush or whatnot. So I figured this would be an excellent time um, to let somebody else have some love and, and consolidate their collection if they so choose. All right, then following the Z palettes, the one palette that I've really gone back and forth on but decided to ultimately pass along is the Urban Decay Electric Palette. I love this palette. There are so many bright, fun shades in here that are just, I mean, an absolute dream to wear. But you know, the reality of it is I just don't reach for this palette as often as I should. I'm I'm going for very neutral looks. I'm trying to completely pan palettes out of my collection and I don't always want to reach for bright shades like this. I did receive the Kat Von D Mi Vita Loca palette last year for Christmas. That has plenty of bright shades as well as neutral mattes that I can incorporate along with pan that palette. So I decided to, to pass this along to somebody who's going to be able to give it the love and attention and that it deserves. So, so sad to see it go, but it's time. So then the next thing that I wanted to include is this Benefit Box Blush in the shade Bella Bomba. I love this shade. It's beautiful. It's a perfect pop of pink for summer. Um, the reason I'm putting this in the box is because I already have a backup of it in the um, Cheeky Sweet Spot palette that came out several years ago. So. I don't want to have multiple pans of the same color of blush. It's time to let this go, pass it along. And I believe that Benefit has actually discontinued the shade. So it would be a fun way for somebody else to try out a really fun pink color for summer and not have to spend a lot of extra money doing it. So awesome, awesome find to whoever decides to pick that up out of the box. And then this lipstick I wanted to include because it's on trend right now. A lot of people are picking this up from Ulta. It is the Lipstick Queen Frog Prince rendition. It's one of those lipsticks that is 
really dark green in the tube, but when you apply it to your lips, it comes out a beautiful flush of pink depending on what your pH levels in your skin are. I really, really enjoyed this. I only used it a couple of times. I've gone on and sanitized it, but I'm not reaching for it. I'm trying to pan mauve lipsticks out of my collection, and so I thought this would be fun for somebody else to try because like I said, you can go to Ulta and buy the green um, cream blush and the lipsticks. So this gives somebody else a way to try it out again without spending any additional money and have something that is hyped up um, for the moment because I'm, I'm not giving it the love and attention it deserves. Then keeping on with the lipstick theme, um, I'm going on and passing this Clinique Lip Color Pop in the shade Fab Pop. It's a beautiful baby pink color. It just is too light for my skin tone. I loved it. I saw Marnie from Miss Gold Girl. She loves these Clinique Pop lipsticks, and this was one of the ones I thought would be very easy, wearable every day, but it's just, it's a little too light pink for my skin tone. So I thought that Ashley or Cherish um, would be able to instantly give this some love, and if they don't, there's gonna be a woman that this looks absolutely gorgeous on for everyday lipstick. Then, oh, I wanted so badly for this to work out, and it just doesn't. So I'm stepping out of my denial, and I'm going to put it in the box. It is Max Stone. I have tried so hard to make this lipstick work. There's not a whole lot of wear on it, but I've tried cool toned eyeshadow looks. I've tried warm eyeshadow looks. This lipstick is not not ideal for my collection. Um, I did go on and keep the lip liner because I figure I can make the lip liner work with um, mauve tones in the fall and whatnot, but the lipstick, I just, I can't pull off the rocker chic vibe on a regular basis. So it's time to just let it go, even though I wanted so badly for that to work out. It's like when Stone and Whirl came out, I was like, we're gonna do it, we're gonna make these work. I got Whirl to work, but Stone is not, not so much. Then along with those, another high-end lipstick I'd like to pass along is the Too Faced La Creme lipstick in the shade Jelly Bean. I've got too many shades like this in my collection. Kind of a cherries in the snow. It's a pinkier red, but it has a little bit of a sheer formula. Perfect for summertime. All right, then another one. I really, really wanted to make this work, and it's just not, it's not the product for me. It is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector pressed in a champagne pop. What a disappointment, you know? Because <laughs> it's always hyped up right now, especially with the palette that just came out and whatnot. But this, I tried. I, I really gave this an honest go. I tried it as eyeshadow, you know, in my inner corner. I tried it as a highlighter. I tried it with different brushes for highlighting and it just accentuates my pores. It's not a good color for me. Um, even when I get a little bit more color being out in the sun, it just, it makes my pores look gigantic. So it's time to pass this along. I know this would be a fun find for somebody wanting to try this highlighter, so hopefully it works out better for them because it definitely, it wasn't the right product for me. And I was really disappointed to have that happen because I wanted it to work, but just didn't. <laughs> so then, the next things that I'm kind of looking to uh, downsize, hopefully somebody will give these some love, are um, three Dazzle Shadows from MAC. I've got um, I Like to Watch, which is a gold color, Try Me On in a teal, and Slow Fast Slow in kind of a garnet reddish sheer red color. I love the look of these, but with my hooded eyes, they don't work for me, especially when I'm trying to apply them to my lid. Even if I foil them with MAC Fix Plus, I get glitter all over the place, and because my eyes are so small, um, that glitter is very irritating to my eyes. So hopefully somebody with um, you know, larger eyelid space to work with than I do will get a lot of love out of these. If not, somebody can back to MAC them. Um, but they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful eyeshadows. They just don't work for me because there's so much glitter and my eyes are too small to pull these off. So I thought I would include those. And then also um, along the MAC lines, I wanted to include this MAC Prep and Prime Skin Base. It's just a sample size. Um, I have plenty of foundation primers and I prefer the Laura Mercier, so I thought I would go on and pass this one along. 
And then I also wanted to pass along, this is the NYX Hydra Touch Brightener Illuminator Crayon. I bought this several weeks ago to try it. It doesn't work out on my skin tone. It's a little too creepy looking, but Cherish or Ashley, y'all might be able to make this work a whole lot better than I did. You can sharpen it. Um, so I went on and sanitized it because I only used it the one time and I just wasn't really fond of the way that it came off on my skin. I kind of was hoping it was going to be like the Benefit High Beam, but in pencil form. So hopefully it'll work out that way for you guys. So we'll see. And then also too, I've got a sample of the Glam Glow Flash Mud Brightening Treatment Sample. Thought that would be fun to include because I use the Aztec Mud Mask with apple cider vinegar when I need a mask. And then I've got a Too Faced um, Black Perfect Black Liner Pencil. It's a black liner pencil. Um, the NYX Blush in the shade Pinched. It's a very similar color to Bella Bomba. So if one of you picks up Bella Bomba and you still want to try this color, this is pretty much a dead on dupe. So NYX Pinched. Then I've got the Ulta Eyeshadow in Havana Nights. So this is very similar to the Too Faced um, Sugar Pop Shadow Blackberry. So I figured I would go on and pan that out of the palette and pass this one along. And also too, there was a shade in the Laura Mercier Artist Palette, I think. And then the A Cosmetics Palette that's pretty close. So I've got plenty of backup shades of that if I ever ran out. And then I've got a Bare Minerals blush in Plush Peach. It's never been opened. I figured it would be a fun summery blush for right now so somebody can enjoy that. And then a um, Makeup Forever sample size of the um, finishing powder, the Loose Translucent Micro Finishing Powder. I'm not a huge fan of this. It leaves a really big white cast on my skin, so I'm hoping it'll work out for somebody else. And then I've also got a Peter Thomas Roth Cucumber Gel Mask sample. Hoping somebody will enjoy that. And then um, a Bare Minerals blush in the shade Rose Quartz. This reminds me of Benefits Dallas if you've ever wanted to try that color and you don't have it in your collection. Just kind of an easy bronzy, everyday, don't have to think about it kind of blush. It looks really pretty with dark smoky brown eyes. So like I said, it's pretty close to Benefits Dallas. All right, and lastly, I have a couple more things that I just want to include. I've got an Inglot powder. Um, that is just too yellow tone for me. It's brand spanking new, so I'm gonna go on and include that in the box because I figured Ashley or Cherish, I might be able to make that work. Um, two L'Oreal Infallible Shadows, one in Timeless Blue Spark, and in Glistening Garnet, I found other identical shades to these in palettes that I'm gonna go on and try to pan in the future. So I'm gonna pass those along. A Milani shadow in the shade Bella Cappuccino. I've got too many browns that are similar to this, so I'm gonna pass this along. And then <clears throat> a rose gold blush. This is really beautiful, but I've got so many blushes that I'm gonna try to get through um, without having to add to the collection. This is the L'Oreal Visible Lift shade in rose gold. It's really beautiful. It's a little bit too light for my skin tone, but it makes a really pretty blush topper. You know, this might be really pretty with champagne pop on top of it for somebody's skin tone. I didn't think to try it that way. But. All right, and the last thing I want to include is this Bite Beauty shade in Opal. It's a really beautiful pearlescent lipstick. As you can see, it's white and you use it as a topper. Like you can wear it on its own and it makes kind of a whitish purple bluish tinge to your lips, but it's really beautiful layered on top of lipsticks. The reason that I'm deciding to downsize this right now is I've been in such a panning mode of moving out um, matte lipsticks and liquid lipsticks and whatnot that I'm really not giving this a whole lot of love and attention. So it's a cool product, but it's something that I want to go on and pass along while it's still good because there are food grade ingredients. So it will expire quickly if it sits in my collection. So. That is about it. Like I said, I'm going to try my best to fit as much of this as I can in the box. Um, hopefully we don't need to go with a bigger box, but we'll see. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this, for keeping up with the box. Like I said, if you want to see all the other videos for everything else that's included, palettes, brushes, 
lip products, blushes, and whatnot, check out all the stops, the boxes made from Ashley Forward in the description box below. And then go on and subscribe to Cherish's channel if you have not already so that you can see when the box gets to her and then when it gets back to Ashley. So that's about it. Have a fantastic 4th of July weekend. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Catch you later.